Well, as officials wrap up the autopsy for Tyree Nichols, the man who died after he was beaten during a violent police traffic stop in Memphis, Shelby County District Attorney Steve Mulroy, announced today that he will not charge one of the former MPD officers involved in that stop. Mulroy said Preston Hemphill was not present for the part of the traffic stop when the other five former officers are accused of beating Nichols. According to Mulroy, Hemphill has been fully cooperative with the TBI, FBI, and the district attorney's office. Hemphill is expected to testify in this case as well. And as the case unfolds, we're getting reaction from the Memphis branch of the MAACP, which has been a vocal advocate of justice for Tyree Nichols and his family. Mulroy well, also said today that um, the that the family is in agreement with the move to not charge Preston Hemphill. Well, president of the Memphis branch of the NAACP and a Memphis mayoral candidate, Van Turner, joins us now to share his thoughts on this latest development in the case. Thanks so much for joining us again. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, first of all, your thought on the DA's plan. Well, I think it's good. Obviously, Officer Hemphill was not there when the actual uh, altercation happened when the beating happened and, and the subsequent mm -hmm. murder. He was there at the beginning. I saw the press conference earlier today. He did uh, deploy his taser. Mm -hmm. However, according to what the DA's office stated, it looked as if uh, Mr. Nichols was perhaps headed to the police car, but they're not saying that's what he was doing. He probably was just trying to get away mm -hmm. and therefore uh, Hemp Hill deployed the taser. But that's it. He said some very unsavory remarks, which I believe he probably regrets now. And that's, that's what he did that evening. And we saw what happened afterwards with the other five officers. He's agreed to testify mm -hmm. and to cooperate, which would be important in establishing the case against the five officers who did beat and murder Mr. Nichols. So I think all in all, it's good. I know that Attorney Crump supports the deal, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, Wales support the deal, right. and so I think that uh, all around it's it's proceeded in, in a in a in a good way, and we're hopeful for a conviction, and we're hopeful for justice for Tyree Nichols at the end of all of this. Right. What you know, some people will talk about the optics of this because Hemphill was the only right. white officer involved in this case. The rest of the officers charged are black, um, but as you said. He's kind of exonerated because he didn't go to the second scene. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we thought about that. Obviously, the NACP had to monitor that issue very closely. Mm -hmm. least, you know, even from the very beginning, right. the five black officers were charged, but the one white officer was not charged. Right. And so we called that out. Attorney Crump called it out. We had concerns. And at the end of the day, as long as Mr. and Mrs. Wells are satisfied with the progress of the case, we rely upon the expertise of D.A. Moroy. Uh, we take uh, to heart the advice and counsel of Ben Crump, who's seen hundreds of these cases. And if, and if all are in agreement that this is the correct way to proceed, then we will support uh, what's happening. And at the end of the day, if you look at the trade-off of uh, the testimony mm -hmm. of Officer Hemphill uh, against uh, the officers who did commit the ultimate crime of beating and killing mm -hmm. Mr. Nichols, I think it's a fair trade-off. Obviously, we want justice for Tyree Nichols. Right. Uh, we continue to pray for Mr. and Mrs. Wells. And we seek, you know, action at the legislature. We want a Tyree Nichols criminal justice reform bill at the state level, and we need uh, the George Floyd Act passed at the federal level. So the NACP will continue to advocate for justice, and we will continue to monitor this case. And we support Attorney Crump and the Nichols and the uh, Nichols family, as well as uh, District Attorney Mulroy. Okay. Switching gears a little bit, as I mentioned at the top of this uh, segment that you are a mayoral candidate as well, mm -hmm. and um, you are you and Sheriff Bonner, Floyd Bonner, are involved in a lawsuit against residency requirements here in the city of Memphis. Mm -hmm. And just recently, the city attorney came out saying that um, in favor of the five-year mm -hmm. uh, residency requirement for candidates. Mm -hmm. Your th what, what, what is your problem with the five-year uh, residency requirement? Yeah, well, I think it's just a little odd now that the city is just jumping in the case. 
they were asked their opinion 30 days ago mm -hmm. when this action was first filed. Now that we're only weeks away from pulling the petitions, they jump in in the case now. So I think, I think that's a bit odd. You know, we as citizens and as voters of Memphis can't allow a group of insiders to decide this race. The vote, the mayor's office belongs to the people. The people uh, back in 95 and 96 put forth an amendment which repealed the five-year mm -hmm. residence requirement. I think that's well known now. And in the charter, it says that the mayor and the council residence requirements should be one and the same. And if we take that together, we know that the five-year residency rule has been repealed. And to the extent that there's any confusion, the city council just passed an ordinance and there will be a referendum on the ballot in August of 24 to clarify it. I think they're asking for two years going forward. And so I think it would be a, an injustice to punish candidates who relied upon the re repeal mm -hmm. of the five-year rule and all of the guidance from the city and the city council's office thus far and take those candidates off the ballot and we merely have relied upon what has been done thus far. This has never come up before since 95. It's odd that this is all coming up now. And we shouldn't allow politics to uh, take away the vote of the people. Let the people decide. The people know best. The citizens want change. They want reform. Uh, they want uh, a new Memphis and a new day, and I think they will decide that on, not, on October 5 and may the best candidate win. All right. Thank you very much. Van Turner, president of the NACP and mayoral candidate as well. Appreciate you coming in and talking with us again today. Thank you. All right.